it is day 14 of vlogmas i hope you're doing really well i am feeling a little bit better today i am still battling some of these cold symptoms i've got a scratchy throat and i'm a little bit sinusy but i feel like all the extra vitamin c and rest is helping at least to keep this cold at bay so I'm just going to continue with at least another day or two of really calm, quiet days, which feels pretty good because I think I needed a bit of a break after a really busy season anyways. And then hopefully I will feel much, much better by the weekend and I can start making my baking list and just start preparing some of the treats for Christmas that I would really like to get done in the next week. I did start a crafty little project this morning. I have never made a dried orange garland before and I noticed there were some instructions for it in that beautiful Nordic winter cookbook that I shared yesterday. And I was so tempted because I really wanna hang them up in here on one of my cabinets that has a whole bunch of cookbooks in it. So those are drying in the oven at a really low temperature right now. They should be ready, I think by 12 or one o'clock today, and then I'm going to let them cool off, string them up, and hang them up in the family room. So that is my little crafty project for today. I'm kind of excited about it. And I thought it would be fun to share a couple of knitting updates with you, partly to share, but partly to kind of assess what I'm working on and hopefully inspire me to finish a couple of things because I'm really at a stage where I want to complete this part of the pattern in both of these projects and I have a new project. So let's start with my wave of change jacket, which I've been sharing here and there throughout Vlogmas. I really love this project. Here's my sweater so far. And I've had a couple of little missteps with my sleeve, nothing major, but at one point I kind of forgot where I was doing my decreases. That was when I had friends over. Then at an earlier point, I realized I might've been doing some of the decreases wrong right at the beginning, but it was okay, I left that. So I went back and fixed the little mistake that I had made a couple of days ago and then as I was knitting again I stopped and I did a count of how many stitches were on my needles and I realized I took the decreases too far. I guess I just wasn't paying attention in the pattern and I had to go back again. So yesterday I sat down for a little bit of an afternoon break. I put on Little Women which is one of my favorite movies to watch this time of year and I've caught back up. I think I have just one or two more rows before I do my last garter ridge and then the cuff of my first sleeve. So that is really where I want to finish with this at least by the end of today, this evening. I really wanna have this cuff done, which is totally doable. It is a chunky weight yarn and I really just want to move past this so that bright and early, either tomorrow or tomorrow afternoon, I can pick up the stitches on the second sleeve and get it going because I have a couple of projects that have been waiting in the wings. As soon as this one is done, I can start the next one. I'm trying to do that more now. I'm trying not to cast on too many things. Got a fluff on my face. But I realized that at this time of year, there are so many projects I want to start. I'll share some of those after. But for now, I'll just continue with what I currently am working on and have in front of me. So my next knitting project, it's in my sugar cookie project bag. It is my Cozy Knitter Advent Socks. And I'm really loving this project. I have been able to keep up with the stripes this year so well i'm very pleased with myself and what are we today we're the 14th and i have just finished the 13th stripe in both of them i think i just have maybe one or two more rows to do in this one 
I stopped late last night catching up on yesterday's stripe because I think this is the perfect point to start putting in my heel and I'm going to be doing a heel flap and gusset with my contrast yarn which is an undyed Stellina fingering weight yarn. It just makes it easy for me to kind of keep them similar. I know with these socks, I really like to keep them matching with where I put my heel in, and I don't want to disrupt the stripes too much. And I can't remember, but I feel like day 13 or 13 or 14 stripes is exactly the spot I need to put in my heel in order for me to get um, all the colors in, and I might even have to repeat one or two, which is fine for me. I just thought that would be really fun to make sure I got in as many stripes as I could. I know a lot of times when I'm knitting socks now, I do make them a little bit shorter. I think I just like that length of the leg for me. But for my Advent socks, I love having a little bit of a longer leg showcasing all of these gorgeous colors. I mean, isn't that so fun? And some of my favorite colors have yet to surface. There are some purples and teals in there that I am so excited about. They are totally my colors. So I'm super excited. That always puts a little bit of a delay in my sock knitting process. So I just wanted to pull them out assess my situation here and just build myself up and get ready to power through those heels. I don't really dislike them, knitting heels, but I also don't love it. Um, so I just want to keep my eye on the end game because I really want these socks. I don't really care if they are completed for Christmas day, but I really want to be at least close to completing them so much so that either Boxing Day or a day or two after that, they will be off my needles and I can wear them while the tree is still up and just enjoy them during the season. So this has been so much fun. This is the Cozy Knitter 24 Stripe Advent Skein. I've got this cute little peppermint bark progress keeper on here just for fun. This is from the Gnome Knitter. So I'm keeping them out. I think I'm going to leave them in this room and try to work on them tonight. Maybe this afternoon. Maybe I'll do that. I think I really need to carve out a little bit of time for completing that sleeve and putting in the heel because those are those parts of the pattern that really slow me down. You may have seen yesterday, in yesterday's video, that I started a new project bag and wound up some yarn I am very excited about. I am kind of obsessed with hats at the moment. Very simple hats. I don't want to do anything cabled or complicated, but I really want to have a few more hats in my basket near the front door just to throw on and kind of liven up my black winter coat. So this is a leather bunny bag of mine in the color sand and in here I wound up some Chelsea Lux yarns DK and mohair my voice is kind of giving out a bit in the color both in the color sugar plum which is possibly one of my most favorite colors ever Gosh, I think it's just gonna be the prettiest hat and this is really going to soften it and light lighten it up a bit because I will be holding the DK and mohair together to make the Stockholm hat by Petite Knit which is right here it is a really simple hat I think you can wear it either with the brim turned up or not depending on how long you make it. I think it is the 
perfect style to showcase this gorgeous color. So I have my needles in here, I've got the pattern, I am just ready to cast on. And I'm not sure if that will happen today or not, but I thought it would be nice to have everything ready in the bag for whenever the mood strikes me. I was pulling out patterns yesterday and looking on Ravelry to find the perfect hat. There's another hat that I knit quite a few years ago that is one of my favorite hats to wear. And I have some yarn coming in the mail for that. Hopefully today, I placed an order a day or two ago um, with The Knitting Loft, which is one of my favorite yarn shops. It's local to me, it's in Toronto. And I just happened to find some beautiful yarns. I forget what weight I ordered, but I got yarn and a mohair to hold together to make a couple more hats this season. I will share when that arrives and what pattern I'm thinking about. And I also have a few other patterns that I've been thinking about for advent knitting. And even though I'm trying not to cast on too many things, I think I've been bitten by the advent knitting bug. So I'm going to assess that situation a little bit later and I'll share some thoughts on that too. We are past the halfway mark of opening up advent calendars. And while I was puttering around the house yesterday, I wanted to tidy mine up a little bit. So I condensed my four yarn advent calendars into two baskets, just putting two in each one. It's much neater over here. And I also started to arrange the opened advent calendars in little separate sections because I have some projects in mind. This one here is a homespun house advent calendar, which is so beautiful. And I've got it all set up in this tray with another skein of undyed yarn, my little notions pouch, and the pattern for the cozy comfort throw. So I've decided that that is what this is going to be. I've always wanted to make one. I had actually started one before. I took that off the needles and I just thought it would be really nice to start a new one and kind of have a fun, beautiful, scrappy piece that's a memento of this holiday season. I'm not really good with those bigger projects, so we'll see how it goes. I've got my Camijo Knits advent calendar down here. I haven't figured out what I want to do with this one yet. I find it so colorful and vibrant and beautiful that I just haven't been struck with the right idea yet. I'm not sure what this is going to be. I actually feel like this could be a really great scrappy blanket. Um, or it could be some really fun scrappy socks. I've been wanting to make scrappy socks for a long time. There have been some fun little additional gifts in this advent calendar. It's been so much fun to open. So this one is just set down here and I'm waiting for inspiration to strike me. I put all of the dandelion and dogwood advent minis back into this box. I put the unopened ones over here and I thought this box was so beautiful that I decided to keep it and I think I'm just going to work right out of this one and for some reason I feel like this combination of minis would be the most beautiful sweater. So I really think this is going to be a garment which is very exciting. I have one or two projects in mind for that. I'll share which ones, but I think that will be cast on in the new year. Over here, I have my Chelsea Yarns Advent Minis, which are also beautiful. And I've been thinking about what project I wanna make with these and have a couple of ideas. I've been browsing on Ravelry and just getting little peeks of different projects that people are casting on with their advents, either on Vlogmases or over on Instagram. And I keep seeing this beautiful anthology throw, 
by Helen Stewart from Knitvent 2022. I have never knit anything pie shaped or circular and it looks like a lot of fun. So I'm considering this one for my Chelsea Yarns Advent. I think that would be beautiful. But I've always really loved Helen Stewart's Habitation Throw. I see so many of these all over the place. It's another beautiful project. So I'm considering both of those. I'm also considering that Apres Ski pattern, which is kind of like a very large bandana style cowl, but it almost looks like a shawl. It is by Shayna Billow for Chelsea Yarns. Considering those three. Need to make a call on that. For the dandelion and dogwood advent calendar that I'm thinking would make a beautiful sweater, I am considering doing the Putney sweater, which is already on my list. I have some beautiful yarn upstairs to make that sweater next. And I think after that one, because I love this silhouette so much, I think this would make a beautiful scrappy version. But I have one other one that's on my mind too. I have seen Mary Lisa wearing this color play pullover. There she is looking gorgeous. And I love the silhouette. I love the look of it with all the minis. It's so beautiful. That might be another alternative. This is called the color play pullover by Beth McDonald Stone. And I was totally inspired by Marilisa from Girl Meets Yarn. Here is the hat that I showed you earlier that I'm hoping to cast on very soon. It's a really beautiful shape. So I've just been browsing on Ravelry, looking at all of the beautiful things. And this is the vest that is waiting in the wings to be cast on. I have the yarn upstairs from John Arbon Textiles. This is the Stockholm slipover. I have so much knitting on my mind. Oh, what to cast on first. The Knitting Loft in Toronto just arrived. I am over the moon with these colors and yarns. It's always a little risky when you choose yarns, especially mohair or surrey and another yarn, a combination online from pictures. But I have to say, I think I did a pretty exquisite job. Look at these colors. I am so in love. And the inspiration for this purchase was this hat that I made quite a few years ago. It's called On the Sea Train. It is a pattern from Espace Tricot. It was designed by Lisa, who used to be one of the owners of Espace Tricot, but she has now moved on. There are new owners. And I was thinking about this hat the other day because I think it is probably my favorite hat out of all of the ones that I've ever knit. And I think what I love about it is, first of all, the simplicity of the design. I feel like it's really modern. The fit is gorgeous. And the yarn itself is just so beautiful. So I was thinking about it. I pulled it out and I decided I wanted to make not one, but two more. And so I picked out these combinations online I think it was just the day before yesterday, and it came so quickly. I purchased them from the Knitting Loft, which is 
one of the most amazing yarn shops I've ever been to in my whole life. It has so many gorgeous yarns that Maria and Bruna curate and shopping online is pretty easy with them, but I have to say these combinations are pretty killer. So the yarn that is called for in this pattern is Wolf Oak Far, which is a worsted weight. And I think this, it's like a chainette kind of yarn. I think that's what makes this hat so beautiful. And so I knew I wanted that again. And I found a couple of colors that I really liked. Let's see, I think these colors just have numbers. I'm not even sure. This one is color 35. And this one is color 14. So this is like a peach. And this is a beautiful deep turquoise. So I just started looking around on the website, trying to find a Surrey or mohair that matched. Oh my gosh. So this one is the Surrey from King Fiber. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. And the color of this one is Lemonade. It's perfect. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Oh, I need to cast one more hats. I need more needles. So this deep teal turquoise, I couldn't find this Surrey alpaca to go with it, which I think I really, really prefer. But I did find this beautiful mohair from Bichy Bouche, which is a silk mohair. And the color of this one is blue green. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm in love with this. So these are some of my hats in my hat plans for the next few weeks. And if I remember correctly, this hat knit up so fast, like I think a day and a half. It's pretty much a weekend project for me. And that's even doing other things. So I'm going to put it on so you can see what it looks like. It's just so beautiful. Here it is on. It is so cozy. I never get itchy with this yarn. It is the perfect fit and it's really easy to style. I just think it's the cutest, simplest hat pattern ever. And I cannot wait to knit a few more.